What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here and in this video we're continuing on talking about transformations of functions and more specifically the transformations we'll talk about in this video is the vertical stretch and compression and reflection in the x-axis. And the reason why I group these two transformations together is because they actually both depend on the same transformation value. So to do a quick little review of the last video, I mentioned we're gonna have some kind of parent function and then we are going to transform it to this kind of format. Right, where we're gonna have this A, K, D, and C value. These are gonna be the transformation values and depending on what value these are, that's going to dictate the kind of transformation that we're going to have. Well, a vertical stretch and compression and a reflection in the x-axis, it's actually dependent on what the a value is going to be of a function, of a transform function. So that's what we're going to deal with in this video. And usually a values are in front of whatever that function you're dealing with is. So if you're dealing with the parent function x squared, then usually the a value is going to be in front. So like 3x squared or 1 over 2x squared, that would be the a value. Or if you're dealing with the square root of x, it would be the a value in front there. Or the absolute value of x, the a value in front. It's usually in front of the function. And depending on the value of a, the transformation is going to differ. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over a couple of cases for the value of A that uh, A can take and then I'm going to give a description depending on what that value is going to be and then I'll show you an example. Right, so the first case is if A is greater than 1. So if the a value is going to be greater than 1, then what we say is that there's going to be a vertical stretch by factor a, whatever that a value is. So for example, if we have uh, y equals 3x squared, notice that the a value is 3, so it's greater than 1. So we would say that we took the function x squared and then vertically stretched it by a factor of 3, by that factor of a. In this case, the a value is 3. And the way this looks, I'm going to show you both x squared and then 3x squared. So the way both of these would look is, let's say we have x squared here. Well, 3x squared, what's going to happen is we're going to take this and vertically stretch it by a factor of 3. And when we vertically stretch something, this is what happens. So that's how 3x squared is going to look compared to x squared. So notice it becomes more thinner and higher as well. Right? Just took this x squared and vertically stretched it. And in this case, by a factor of 3. So that's an example of a case when a is uh, going to be greater than 1. Now, the next case is if a is equal to 1. And if a is equal to 1, there's actually no transformation. Because if you think about it, it will just be 1 times x squared, which is just x squared. So that means x squared did not change. There was no transformation if a is equal to 1. What if a is between 0 and 1? If this happens here, then we would say that there's a vertical compression by factor a. Sorry, let me put that A here in uh, quotations, like that. So an example of that is if we have maybe Y equals 1 over 2 X squared. Okay, if we have Y equals 1 over 2 X squared, 
here's how x squared looks like. But if we take this and we vertically compress it, then y equals 1 half x squared is going to be out here. So that's going to be 1 half x squared. So it's going to widen the function, right? And in this case specifically, y equals 1 half x squared. Notice that the a value is a half, so it's between 0 and 1. So we would say that x squared is vertically compressed by a factor of 1 half. Now what if a is equal to 0? So following this kind of order, next up is 0. Well, if a is 0, notice that there's going to be no function. We'll just end up having y is equal to 0. So if we have like y equals ax squared, if that a value is 0, we just end up with y is equal to 0. Right, so usually this case here will not come up. Right, and then after zero, what happens? We're gonna get into the negative numbers now. So let's do a couple of cases with, the, um, with some negative values. So let's say that uh, A is between negative one, so it's greater than negative one, but it's less than zero. Okay, whenever the a value is negative, there's going to be a reflection in the x-axis. So that's where that reflection in the x-axis is coming from. All right, so notice here, if a is between negative 1 and 0, it's going to be negative, so there's going to be a reflection in the x-axis. And also, in this case, it will be vertically compressed by factor, and we wouldn't say the a value, we would say the absolute value of a, because a is going to be negative, but when we're talking about a factor, we always mention the positive number. Okay, so let me give you an example. Let's say that we have y equals negative 1 over 2x squared. So let me draw both here. This is going to be x squared. Well, because a is negative, there's going to be a reflection and there's going to be a compression. So remember that y equals 1 half x squared looked like this. It was wider. Well, now what we're going to do is we're going to take that wider function and we're also going to reflect it. Sorry, I should have put this in a different color. It's all good. So this would end up being negative one-half x squared. So it's the exact same as half x squared, except it's reflected now in the uh, x-axis. So it's pointing downwards, right? So if you got a function like this, and you had to describe the transformations from the parent function x squared, you would say it's reflected in the x-axis and then it's vertically compressed, I'll put VC here for short form, vertically compressed by a factor of 1 over 2, which the A value is negative a half, so the absolute value of negative a half is positive a half. Right? Whenever you're writing the factor, when you're describing the factor in words, you always put the positive value. The fact that it's negative gets taken care of in this description, in the reflection. Right, so if the a value is between negative 1 and 0, this is what happens. Now, what if the a value is, um, is just negative 1? Remember, when the a value was positive 1, we said that there is no transformation. But if it's negative 1, there is a transformation, and it's only a reflection in the x-axis. So in that case, there would be no vertical stretch or compression. There's just a reflection in the x-axis uh, in the x-axis if a is negative one. So if we have y equals negative x squared, well, x squared looks like this, and negative x squared is just going to be reflected in that x-axis. So it's going to be pointing downwards. That's going to be negative x squared. 
right? So there's just a reflection in the x-axis if A is negative one and there's no vertical stretch or compression. And then finally, if A is less than negative one, then we say there's a reflection in the x-axis because it's still negative and we would say there's a vertical stretch by factor absolute value a. Right, so an example of this is y equals negative three x squared. Notice the a value would be negative three, which is less than negative one. So we know y equals x squared looks like this. We know y equals 3x squared looks like this. We went over that. That was the first case we went over. But negative 3x squared, we would take this 3x squared graph and then just reflect it. So that would be negative 3x squared. Right? So when you're asked to describe the transformations of negative 3x squared, the transformations would be there's a reflection in the x-axis because it's the a value is negative and then it's a vertical stretch by factor three. You wouldn't say negative three, you would just say that uh, positive value. So vertical stretch by factor three. And that is all the cases of A. So all the way from greater than one, which was the first case, to A being less than negative one and everything else in between. And we showed this with the um, with the parent function x squared, but again, it could be applied to any of the other parent functions.